In part 4 of my 23 love types separate to the ancient Greek and aforementioned in the Bible, I'll be going through my final six. They are subconscious love, withheld love, cute love, mourning love, demented love and immoral love. The worst kind that I put at the bottom of the thumbnail. If you haven't already, please check out parts 1, 2 and 3 because it is some of my finest work to date and is definitely worth learning. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I have been losing subscribers lately due to my videos exposing the false teacher, David Icke. Clearly, many conspiracy theorists who subscribe to this channel didn't like that. But they cannot deny that it is now an official fact that David Icke is a mass murderer and heretic, as well as many other very bad things including drawing you away from Jesus Christ, the worst of them all. Okay, without further ado, I'll go over my final six love types. Number 18, subconscious love. Loving someone or something subconsciously and not realizing it in the same way that we might subconsciously dislike someone and it inevitably manifesting. This love type is quite common with adolescents and small children and although desperately trying to withhold this emotion eventually it begins to reveal itself. Which brings me to number 19 withheld love. Very similar to subconscious, only this time it is conscious. Again, this is quite common in younger people, especially girls and even some women who like to play hard to get. For what reason or purpose is still unclear. This one is probably the most ambiguous of all the love types. Do women even know why they do this? Probably not. Trust me girls, it isn't going to work. We are not mind readers and you aren't going to get the results you want by behaving this way. Just be yourself. Don't hide your feelings for someone by being a you know what because the right guy isn't going to have a clue what's going on and you'll only end up attracting the worst. What do you expect? It's also very unrighteous to do this. Number 20, cute love. Everyone's experienced this one, unless there's something seriously wrong with you. Cute love is whenever you see a little baby or animal and you express love for it straight away. In fact, here's a little slideshow for you so you can do just that. This love type is often followed by silly noises and wanting to touch the little baby or animal. Prior to learning about the dangers of yoga, I attended a yoga class, only one, where at the end of the session we were told to dangerously let our minds wander off into a calm place and to think of something small and cute that we were holding in our hands. Perhaps a baby or a small animal. I chose a koala bear, but if I had to choose again it would probably be a baby kangaroo or something I'd recently discovered and couldn't believe existed, a midget pig. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> Number 21, mourning love. This is the bereaving love we endure when we lose loved ones. Again, this could be a subcategory of Storge, one of the ancient Greeks. One thing I am planning to do in the future is see which ones in my list can possibly fit into the original eight by the ancient Greeks and which ones do indeed need to be separate. But I think it's most. A lot of these don't belong to any of the love types of the ancient Greeks. They're not unconditional. They're not eros or mania for a partner. They're not brotherly or family based. Some don't even involve people. 
So I'll carry on as I am and see where we end up. But I will most likely be doing all those subcategories and which ones need their own categories in a future video. Number 22, Demented Love. Demented Love. Sorry guys, I've come up with some really weird ones here. Hey, I was on a roll, you know. <laughs> demented Love is when people lose their minds and love in a demented way. Some might love a teddy bear or a lamppost even. Not because it's idolatrous fool's love, but because they have lost their minds. So it also goes in its own category. Demented love. Scary. There's actually a song that's very relevant here, and that is the Love Struck song, where the man is literally singing about his love for a lamppost. <laughs> Although it's no laughing matter. I apologise for that. It is very serious, and I pray that those who suffer from this and their families, because it's really not nice. In fact, I can tell you from personal experience of the psychosis nightmare I went through during my bad fast that made me severely paranoid that losing your mind is absolute hell. Okay. Mentally, I would say it's the worst thing any human being can endure. It is torture. It is your worst nightmare. You really don't want to lose your mind. When you think everyone's talking about you and out to get you, that is worse than torture. And Jesus had to endure that for real. All the mocking and scorning and everyone hating him. Forget the physical torture of his crucifixion that he had to endure. The worst torture, I can tell you now, was what was going through his mind. All the way up until his last gasp. He even thought God was against him. What an absolute nightmare. My little psychosis episode is nothing compared to that, and it's the worst thing I've ever been through. As I said, losing your mind is definitely no laughing matter. Hence why demented love is also right at the bottom of the thumbnail. And just for the record, no, I haven't experienced this love type. Thank God. Number 23, immoral, abominable. Now this next type of love I don't think I can discuss on here because of how sensitive it is. It involves a very lost group of people basically with very unnatural tendencies. Nearly every time it's pure lust, not love. But there are some very rare cases where it isn't. One might call this type of love demented However, the people who experience it aren't necessarily. They're still sound of mind, but are just really sick and need to find Jesus who will cure them. I recently watched a movie, I had to cover my eyes for some of it, about Elton John. I found it very sad that although he tried to marry and live a natural lifestyle, it didn't work and he kind of gave in. Some might even be born this way because of abnormalities, perhaps in their chemistry, and they really do love in an immoral way. However, this is a disease which Jesus can cure. I've seen it in churches and seen people even get married afterwards. Incidentally, this love type is not natural as some people can test. They might think it is, but all of these perversions derive from the fallen angels of Genesis chapter 6, the book of Giants and Kebron Agast, all of which correspond for they came down to earth to defile themselves with everything that moved, including animals. This is the true source of these abnormalities. No, God did not make you that way. The fallen angels did. This is a lot worse than the affectionate love of Eros. I fear that generations from now, mankind's fool's love, or idolatry I've mentioned before, would have advanced to oxymora, 
loving to hate, etc., and then immoral. And the whole definition of love will change. It's already happening, in fact. We are seeing people literally saying, and in some cases singing, it's good to be bad. It's cool to be a rebel, and so on. Well, that's going to get a lot worse, and eventually we're going to see people saying it's loving to hate. Love is evil. Evil is love. Hail Satan, he's a loving God. This kind of nonsense that we're seeing in the Church of Satan right now and the Illuminati. Well, woe unto those who call evil good and good evil, but put darkness for light and light for darkness, but put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 5.20 KJV You know, when I look at my colossal list of love types right here and compare it with the old one, do you know what I see? I see that as mankind has evolved, we've devised more ways of loving that were perhaps unheard of to the ancients. We have increased our capacity to love, even if it is in abnormal ways. And that's quite reassuring, actually. It shows that we're not such a lost cause if more of us can love like the greatest of us who have discovered and can hopefully teach more profound ways of loving one another. Amen. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you like what you've seen here today. How about that? 31 types of love for you to contemplate and reflect on and start using to your advantage. Coming up next in this LD Love playlist will be the five love languages by Gary Chapman. Men will love that video especially. Guys, once you know what these five love languages are, you'll be able to test them to see which one works and then you'll have them in the palm of your hand. And they are so simple. It's a piece of cake if you just know these. This book is gold. There's something else I'd like to quickly address while I'm doing this video and perhaps I'll do another video on it. And that is the belief and repetition that the opposite of love is fear. Well, even when I was younger, I knew that sounded wrong. Where on earth do people get this from? The opposite of love is indifference, not to love, naturally. And the opposite of fear is comfort or ease. I'll tell you what's very interesting, and that's spelling love backwards, which is evil. You've got the opposite of love right there. This seems like common sense to me, but still people keep repeating that the opposite of love is fear, which is bizarre. If any of you can explain why this keeps being repeated, I'd like to know, because as far as I can see, it's wrong. Anyway, Thanks for watching. Coming up are the five love languages by Gary Chapman and how guys can use this to their advantage. See you soon.